Hi there, RC Girl here. So today I'm back with another RC plane video. I will get back into the RC car, so don't worry about that. This is the Mini Apprentice S from Horizon Hobby, and it's part of their Teach Yourself to Fly product line. And this is the Ready to Fly kit. So everything you need to get up in the air included in this one box. So I'm gonna be doing this video in a two-part series. In this video, I'm gonna unbox it, show you guys what comes in this kit, and also do a quick assembly. And then in the second video, I'm gonna take it out to my local airfield and give it its maiden flight. So if you guys just wanna see the flight portion of the video, feel free to skip on over there. Otherwise, stick around and we'll unbox this bad boy. If you've seen my two previous videos, you know I've been getting super into RC flight, but I'm still a pretty beginner pilot, so I think this is gonna be a great step up from the Sport Cub S that I've been flying around. I'll put a link to that video up here where I taught myself to fly for the first time, and this is gonna be a little bit bigger in size. It's gonna handle the wind a little bit better. It's still a four channel plane. It could also be a great option as your first plane if you wanted to go that route. So just like the Sport Cub S, it has their safe technology in it. So you're gonna have the beginner, intermediate, and experienced flight modes. Also that panic button, if anything goes wrong, you can press that and self-correct. And also their AS3X stabilization technology. So it's gonna be a great option as your first plane. It's gonna be super stable in the air for you. Let's open it up. So this box is massive and that's because the wing comes in one piece. Alrighty. Okay, oopsies. So here we have it. This is everything included in the box. Let's take it out. All right, let's start with the wing. So this is a 48 inch wingspan. If you've seen the regular Apprentice, that's a 59 inch wingspan. So this is gonna be almost a foot shorter than that. It's also a dihedral. So if you can see here, it's not quite flat. It has this V shape, which is gonna be very nice and stabilizing for beginners. It's also a high wing design, which means that the wing sits on top of the plane. That's also a really great stabilizing feature. And then lastly, the wing width or the cord is a little bit wider on the ends, which is gonna really exaggerate the dihedral effect and give you a lot more lift. I'm really excited to fly this. So let's put this away for a second. Next, let's look at our fuselage. So all the electronics are pre-installed for you. I did see another video that says to make sure that your servos are nice and tight in there and glued in properly because Someone seemed to have a little disaster when one of the servos came loose, it wasn't glued down completely. So just double check that. Also double check that all your screws are tightened on the servo horns. Just do a pre-flight check and make sure that everything was assembled properly from the factory. The only thing you're gonna really need to do is to connect your ailerons at the beginning of every flight when you attach your wing. So those will connect right here to this Y splitter. So the motor is a 1300 kV brushless motor. So one thing I wanted to point out is that the propeller and the nose cone here are at a bit of an angle. So they're down and to the right. And this is because they've corrected the thrust angle. The planes usually have a tendency to want to go left given the torque of the motor. So this is going to correct for that. And it's going to track really straight when you're landing and taking off and going straight in the air. So I think that's going to be a really great feature for beginners. Another great feature about this plane that makes it great for beginners is that it has a tricycle nose wheel design. And so it's gonna turn when you apply rudder and a lot of the weight is on the front of a plane. So instead of having a tail dragger, which kind of requires a little bit more thrust and momentum when you're turning, this is gonna track a lot better. It also has optional floats, which are sold separately, which I'm probably gonna get to. I can't wait to fly on water. I'm super excited about that. So this is the battery compartment down on the bottom. It does come with one 3S battery. This is a 1300 milliamp 20C discharge rate. I did pick up a couple extras because your flight time, I think they say it's around five minutes and you're gonna wanna fly it a couple more times. So I definitely recommend picking up a couple extra batteries. I'll put a link in the description box below. 
So this is the DXE. This is the transmitter that it comes with. I'm actually quite impressed with it. It is more of an entry level transmitter, but it looks pretty nice and it has all the controls that you need for this plane. So this is a four channel plane. So you're gonna have your throttle and your rudder and then your ailerons and your elevator here. It also has your three flight modes, your beginner, intermediate, and expert flight modes, and also the throttle kill. So make sure that you have your throttle kill on at most times unless you're flying. So in case you kick this up, it's not gonna start your motor. And then you have your dual rates here, which is gonna be high and low rates. And then you have your trim settings here on each of these. So we'll give that a try. I'm kind of excited to try it out. I have the DX6 as well, but I wanted to also try out their ready to fly kit, which comes with the DXE. So one cool thing is that it comes with the car charger. So if you're out in the field, you can have a constant supply of batteries. Just plug this into your car and plug your batteries in. Also it comes with a wall adapter as well. So you can just plug that bad boy in, plug it into the wall and then charge your batteries. I think it takes about an hour to charge. So if you're gonna stay in the hobby, definitely recommend picking up a nicer charger at some point, but this will do the job. So here we have rubber bands. These are gonna hold on our wing. I'll show you guys how to assemble that properly. Also comes with some hardware to hold on our landing gear on the bottom. And then I think these are for the optional floats. So this is the landing assembly for the floats. And then lastly, our packet of instructions. So those instructions go into a little bit more detail for the beginner pilot. So everything you need to know before taking off for your first time. So definitely check those out. Okay, now let's do our assembly. Okay, so I believe to assemble it, all you need is a regular Phillips head screwdriver. So first let's install the landing gear. So you're gonna need your hardware that it came with and eight screws. So insert your wheels into the slot here as far down as they go and you're going to want the ones with this little beveled notch in them that are going to go in the rears. Let's flip this bad boy over. Sweet. The next, get your tail and then it, you want to align it with the holes here and then your rudder. And I think this slides in like this. And then you align these two holes here with these two pins. Slide that in like that. And then it looks like we have two screws on the bottom of this. They say careful not to over tighten these because you don't wanna break the plastic. So next we're gonna connect our clevises to the elevator and rudder control horns. So these are your clevises here. It says to use the outmost hole. So which looks like this one here. Let's flip this around. We're gonna do it for our elevator. Looks good to me. Wing installation. Okay, grab your wing. I'm gonna go grab my wing. Okay, so now we have our wing. So we're gonna need to connect our aileron servo wires to the harness, the Y harness included in here. It says it doesn't matter which part of the harness that they're connected into. So either or. So our aileron servo wires should always be plugged into port two of our receiver and it looks like they are. So we're good to go there. So let's place the wing on top of the plane. Next, take six rubber bands, two, four, six. They have two extra for you. So you're gonna take one rubber band and it's gonna go front to back on each side of the wing and then one is gonna go crosswise. All right, and that should hold your wing on in place nice and tight. So as I mentioned, it comes with one 3S battery in the box with an EC3 connector. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that your transmitter's powered up before you plug in your battery. So we're gonna plug our battery in, then you're gonna to wanna to flip the plane over on a flat surface so the stabilization can initialize. So let's get this bad boy going. 
And then also we're gonna want to make sure that our center of gravity is balanced on the plane. So since this is the first time I'm flying this, I don't really know how far up or back the battery needs to be. So we'll check that. I'll show you guys how to check that and we can adjust it if necessary. It should already be bound from the factory to the transmitter. But if not, there's a little bind cable here. And that three beeps means that it's a three cell battery. All right. Let's Okay, always makes me want to do a little dance. Make sure that your servos are hooked up properly. You know, the tag, tag, make sure that that one's going up when you go to the left. Make sure that this one's going up when you go to the right. Your elevator should go up when you press back and then down when you press forward. And then rudder should also move your front wheel here. Awesome, looks like everything's plugged in correctly. Then let's just test our throttle. So make sure your throttle's all the way back, turn off your throttle kill, and then you can hold the plane and just power up the throttle just a tad. Ah, feels good, it's hot in here. So lastly, we wanna make sure that our plane center of gravity is balanced. And so if you go 2.95 inches past the wing, you can put your fingers underneath the wing and on each side, and then make sure that the plane sits level. So to me, I have the battery all the way forward and this seems to be a good spot for it. And to me, this looks pretty level. So now I know where my battery needs to be. You do kinda of wanna do this every single time just to make sure nothing shifted, but that's how you balance your plane. So just going quickly over the four channel setup. Here we have our ailerons and this is gonna be your banking. Your throttle obviously is gonna be the power of the plane. Um, your rudder is gonna give you that yaw function, the side to side, and then your elevator is gonna change your elevation. A little bit about the safe technology, just like the Sport Cup S, the AS3X stabilization is gonna to wanna to self-correct the plane. So if you can see here, we have the ailerons moving a bit when I move the plane side to side. So in beginner mode, you're gonna have limited controls. So it's not gonna let you go into the more extreme flight angles. In intermediate mode, it gives you a little bit more control. You still have the stabilization and in experience mode, it gives you full stick control. So you can slowly work your way up to the experience mode. Also don't stay in beginner mode for too long. I think use those as a training feature, but then it's gonna be a lot more realistic if you're in the intermediate and experience modes. Okay, looks like we're ready to go, which I'm super excited about. One thing that happened though, is that PG&E took over the airfield that I usually fly at. They're doing these like tree, tearing down trees or doing something. And so they've done all their vehicle staging there. And so unfortunately I don't have a place to fly right now. So I'm looking for some new sites to fly. So I hope you guys like the unboxing and the quick tutorial on how to assemble this. Stay tuned for part two, where I take it out into my local field and take it out for its maiden flight. So stay tuned for that or see you later.